questions. We're definitely going to have a question and answer time, especially if you missed some of Dr. TD's or <laughs> you're kind of a little, you know, out of sorts right now. I don't know why my video is still not showing. I've never had that happen in Zoom. So I'm just going to put my university picture up there so you at least know what I look like. But we are all glad you're here. Um, and use the chat if you can't hear us or if you have a question you want us to just be sure and answer at the end. Be sure and just use the chat down at the bottom. This is just like the WebEx if you haven't used Zoom. Up on your top right, there's a plate, well, or my top right, that says speaker view, and you can also do grid view, and you can see everybody on the screen. So like right now we have 25 people on it, and we're all fitting on the screen. So, um, but also, oh good, Kim said I was able to get video back by hitting stop video and start video. No, mine's just showing black, but thank you. But yeah, we'll try to just use the chat to figure out if we need to. Uh -huh. um, okay, so yes, I am the one of the field supervisors yeah. for the Grow Your Own grant. I am the coordinator of our field-based experience, which will be your fall semester um, before the semester of clinical teaching. So normally, if you hear people talking, your field-based experience is two days a week on Tuesday and Thursday. But being part of the Grow Your Own, you will be um, on campus at either West Oso or TAF five days a week. So it is more intensive. You're there every day in the field, both fall and spring. So that is one of the reasons on the application you will see we ask you about other classes you have and, and other hours and jobs and things like that because Grow Your Own is a, an intense intensive um, embedded experience at the school where you become part of the school community and you are there every day. Um, you will have me as a professor in the fall and the spring and then Dr. Brune and Dr. TD will also be field supervisors and be there of course in tandem. All three of us work together. So um, you will see our faces all year. I did bring a few of our Grow Your Own candidates from this year to just talk to you. Hopefully you saw, you got an email with the video that showed some of the testimonials. If you didn't, it's also on our social media, on Facebook, on the um, College of Ed, and at Twitter also. So um, you can see the video there if you want. But we, we brought a few of the girls here so that they could tell you in their own words. So um, let's see, I saw Jasmine. Yes, you can't see your video, but Jasmine, you're on mute. If you will talk first a little bit, tell your name, tell what your certification is, you know, where you were, and just a minute about your experiences with Grow Your Own, please. Okay, yes. So also my video is not working, not by choice, but like it's just, it's also saying like start video, but it won't. Um, okay, so my name is Jasmine. I am EC through six bilingual um, emphasis. Um, so we were at West Oso, right, for the full year. Right now we're doing the online learning, so that's also been fun. But um, it's honestly been such a great experience being part of this program because, like they said, we're there daily. Like, you're going to be there Monday through Friday. You're going to be there from, like, first day of school to, like, last day of school, hopefully. Um, you know, here we didn't get to do that right now because of everything going on. But, you know, just – you get so much experience just like alone in the first month because you're there constantly and like um you're you can choose to go to like extra events and make yourself a, a part of that community and you can grow like your friend list in teacher community because you get to ask so many people for help like yes you're gonna be assigned a ct but you also have all those surrounding teachers like in the hallway so that you can go next door to and ask for help. Like you can uh, talk to your principal, you can talk to your librarian, you could talk to your like technology person. Um, it's honestly been such a great experience because for me, I really enjoyed going um, over like everything that I needed help with, with my CT, with Dr. Johnson, with anyone I needed help, I would ask for it because that's what you do here. You like ask for help, you, yeah, really good. you sure. like, um, huh? Oh, nothing. Sorry. Oh, okay. I was like, what? I'm so sorry. Um, that's okay. And I really enjoyed just like being there Monday through Friday. And my like ultimate favorite thing was like being able to see the progress in the students because you start a like project on Monday and you finish it two weeks later and you're able to see them like complete it and see them grow as a student. And then you see yourself grow as a, as a teacher. 
because you're seeing all those progress and those steps that you would possibly miss if you only go two times a, a week, you know, in comparison to going five times a week and the full year. So honestly, it's just, it's been so great for me. And like, I've grown so much as a person, as a teacher, just being there full time to help those students through everything that they've needed help with through like through the year. Thank you, Jasmine. And um, I'm going to let a couple of others speak, but they'll be on, on with us this whole time. So at the end, if we have time for questions, you can ask them questions also. I'm going to let Samantha go next because she's one of our math certification. And I think there's some math people on here. And I know that the schools really um, need math <laughs> teachers. So Samantha, go ahead. Hey, hi, I'm Sam. As she said, I'm math four to eight. Um, Kind of going off what Jasmine was saying, like with the, it's not just more days in the classroom, you actually see different things such as like, uh, like with the math, I really like that we got to do the PLC meetings every week. So every Wednesday during our conference period, we would meet up with all the math teachers and kind of just discuss what we wanted, previous test scores. Um, and you get a little bit of like the, uh, what was the word I'm looking at? Like the vertical alignment stuff, because it was all the math. It wasn't just your grade, it was a whole math department. So you see, okay, where are they teaching them in six? So we know what to do in seven to prepare them for eighth. And so you got like, you know, a broader idea of that. Um, and also just being there more days, you saw different things like certain testing um, that maybe you wouldn't be there two days a week or like we have block schedule that maybe if you're there two days a week, you wouldn't see both sides of it. Um, and you just, yeah, you get to see so much more. And then adding on to that, not that you can't if you're doing two days a week, but it helps when you're five days a week. Um, like the extras that you do, like I went to quite a few football games. I went to some of the basketball games, some of the volleyball games, and it's fun because the kids are like, Ms. Ocha, are you coming to this game? Are you coming to my track meet? Are you coming to this? And like, it's a whole community thing. And I think I might have put that in the in the short video we did. One of the main reasons I really wanted to try this was the idea that your first year teaching is just going to be intense and a lot. And I think it's pretty much priceless to already be a part of the community and like know your resources and be comfortable talking to the teachers and um, like your higher ups, like the principal, assistant principal, and already know everyone. So when you come in, there's already a sense of like, you're kind of at home. You already know some of the students, you know, you know where everything is. Like, it's just, uh, it makes you comfortable and it makes you feel like like you belong there. And I think that means a lot your, your first year going in. Thanks, Sam. And then Kimberly Rosa is here. So Kimberly, if you'll talk, <laughs> please. Hi, I'm Kimberly. Um, I'm EC through six bilingual. And um, this experience was has been very rewarding, but it hasn't been easy. I will say that you will make a difference in your students' lives. Um, and it's going to be hard work too because you're there just like your teacher the five days out of the week you're going to the meetings that she is going to you're going to after school activities that she's going to so I feel like it's the closest experience that you get to being um, like an actual classroom teacher uh, this being said all eyes are on you and I have some advice to always, always, always do your best to be positive and respectful to others. Make sure that um, you, um, you rely on your support team, like Dr. Johnson, like the other students, like your CT, because you will have each other to get you through and just be positive. Um, this experience is so, so special and you are special and you're gonna feel special and grow your own. Thank you very much, Kimberly. Okay, so next. <laughs> I don't think anybody else from Grow Your Own is on. I can't see, right? Okay, I think that's it. <laughs> okay, uh, next was supposed to be you again, Dr. Johnson, to talk if, if the girls didn't mention any benefits, uh, any, any other benefits that you can think of. Well, I mean, obviously that one of the big benefits is the $15,000 scholarship. So you've seen that on the flyer and the girls, you know, all said, do we mention the money? I said, well, that is, important, yeah. you yeah. know, because part of, like we said, you know, you, you, some of the girls did work a little bit, but because you are, you know, you want to be part of the community, you are going to do after school things and do 
you know, games and just, you know, be with the teachers, then, you know, it, it is a little bit harder to work. We, you know, talk about hours and things with you, but having that, the extra money, the scholarship really helps. That's a benefit, of course. The benefit is, is you do become a close part of this team, this grow your own team. You know, we become family with Dr. Brun, Dr. Tejeda Delgado, and, and I, and the other, you'll, there'll be 10 of you, just like there were this year. And you are known on that in, that, in that school. I mean, they, you know, our students, uh, the two of the ones, especially on here already have their positions for next year. And they know, you know, they've already, the principals, you know, rely on you. They really do treat you as a member of the school community. It's not just a, you know, a, it, it's really a, you are there just like the classroom teachers, as they said. So, you know, those are huge benefits that you really do get that, that mentorship and that building relationships with the students, with each other, with colleagues, with, um, you know, as Sam said, the administration, and you do become a part of this family where you have that support and you are supported and encouraged and mentored every step of the way. Um, and not that, you know, we do that, of course, in our other clinical experiences. So I don't want you to think that, you know, unusual as far as that. But the, the benefit of this is because of that extra time spent in that smaller group, in that nurturing with your school where you know you will be teaching eventually. So um, I think that's all I'll add. But if they have questions at the end, we can, you know. <laughs> can I just say one more thing? And I'm not Peter, really, I'm Kim. Um, <laughs> Some of you might know my husband, but anyway, um, I think another benefit is that um, we are very intentional about placing you with a cooperating teacher. Sometimes you sort of just get the luck of the draw if you're sort of doing it blindly, especially for, um, you know, sometimes field-basing, sometimes student teaching. So we'll work really hard to kind of match you with someone that we think would work well. And then if it's not working, we can always make those adjustments. And then the other big advantage, Dr. Johnson talked about it a little bit, is if you have any friends um, that are currently seniors, I can't imagine the stress they're feeling right now. The application and interview process is very stressful in general, and there's a lot of waiting. And we're, you know, we can't guarantee 100% of you will get jobs, but I'm, well, I really think right now we have six people placed, and um, I think we'll get to the 10, hopefully, God willing. But that support for the getting your first job. And I liked what Kimberly said about being positive. Um, they'll probably tell you this in field basing, but you're kind of on a job interview every day. People are watching you, but that's a good thing because um, you're known. You know, when you apply to a district and they don't know you, you're just sort of another piece of paper that they see. So it's really beneficial to let people know you over the course of the year. That's all. Okay, thank, thank you, Ms. Moore. Uh, before I hand it over to talk, Dr. Tejeda Delgado, I do want to explain that there is a three-year commitment. You, uh, you are the people that have accepted the jobs at West Oso are committed to work there for three years. So that, that is part of your commitment also. Okay, Dr. I, I, Tejeda Delgado, just start wherever you want to start. <laughs> right, so some of what I said was how, has already been said a little bit. Okay. But um, so, and I don't know where I stopped or where I lay, where I um, was sort of laid off. But <laughs> I just wanted to reiterate a few things um, uh, and and forgive the redundancy or the repetitiveness of it because, like I said, I don't know where I left off or what you guys caught and what y'all didn't. But this is a two-year grant like every well we, we received a two-year grant you'll be involved with us for one year um, it's a full 28 weeks minimum uh, requirement from you and like Dr. Johnson said it is all day every day Monday through Friday and you will be either placed at Taft ISD or at West Ezo ISD because uh, one thing that's different this semester or this time around cycle three is that we now have two districts that we're working with as opposed to one. And we'll work with the candidates that get chosen um, with regard to where they're going to end up. Um, we'll take a lot of things into consideration, including, and, and very importantly, is the area of certification 
that those candidates have and as they match up with the districts that we're working with, with West ISO and Taft ISD. Um, one of the things that, that Dr. Johnson said that I wanted to reiterate is the time commitment. You do, you do get a $15,000 scholarship, but that is well deserved um, for a myriad of reasons, but one of them is because there is an increased time commitment and um, beyond the normal five days a week during school hour commitment, but there's also after school that we're gonna sometimes be asking you to attend meetings, professional development, um, uh, even board meetings, uh, events, social events, all sorts of things that not, it's not that all the other clinical teachers don't attend things like that, you'll just be attending more of them. It, it's just more, it's magnified with you. And we may also ask you to attend Saturday professional development sessions as well. The point that I'm trying to get across with this is that it definitely is an increased time commitment, um, but a good one, not in a bad way. I have, we have some GYO people here, candidates that are here that can, that can hopefully concur with that. It's not in a bad way, but because we do ask you to do extra and well go, go beyond, oh, above and beyond, that is part of the, the scholarship and part of the rationale, reasoning behind that as well, along with other things. Uh, so, so we do, um, in all transparency, when we look at these applications, we are looking also at um, how, how you are being spread in terms of like your course uh, requirements that you still have left to do and your course loads, because that obviously will contribute and may compromise the time commitment and the time that you that you have to commit and dedicate to this grant, to this experience, to these 28 weeks. And so we don't want to place you in a precarious situation by, by, um, by putting too much on your plate with uh, approving you for this grant or getting you on this grant, but nor do we want to compromise the quality of the experience and the quality of the grant and the expectations that the grant has, but also what we've promised and the dedication and commitment that we have to our district partnerships, West Ozo and Taft ISD, and, and what they are hoping to, to be able to, to get from, from your wholehearted and, and full undivided attention. Um, so those are some of the things that I wanted to convey to you that are really Im important to me and to all of us. And uh, I think, I, I don't, again, I sound like a broken record to myself because I feel like I said this already, but I don't know how much of it you heard. I know that you heard the part where we're one of four institutions that was selected. So that's very good because I do remember uh, Dr. Brune um, yes. confirming that for me. Yes. So I do remember that part. Um, and I just want to say that that this is going to be an this is an exciting adventure and an exciting grant to be a part of. It is um, a way that Texas Education Agency has the reason that the main one of the main reasons our goals it, it was object, uh, designed for was to recruit fine, excellent, well prepared teachers to go into those districts that sometimes tend to be the smaller districts or the underrepresented districts. And so it's sort of like a bridge program for us and that we help prepare our students and, and feed them directly into these designated districts, in this case being West Ozo ISD and Taft ISD. Okay, good. Thank you, Dr. TD. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna go over the timeline and then I want to let Mr. Ramos talk a little bit about Taft since they're a new partner and then and also uh, Ms. Moore about Westoso. Uh, the, the timeline is that today the uh, application will go up on our website. We didn't, we didn't want it to go up early, we wanted it to go up after this information session. Uh, the, the application is due back to us by May 1st at five o'clock. Uh, after we review the applications on May 1st, we will decide based on, uh, what, uh, based on what Taft and West Oso are telling us that they need in their terms, terms of what their needs are for teachers, uh, we will invite you for an interview. Now, last year, 
we have the interviews face to face. And so maybe, maybe, maybe in May, we would be able to interview you face to face. And the people interviewing you would be uh, Dr. TD, Dr. Johnson, myself, and representatives from the two school districts. We ask everybody the same questions. And then uh, we've got to get, uh, we have to choose you uh, by about mid-May, because if you are chosen, you will be given something that's called an MOU. And it's a memorandum of understanding. And it's, it will say that you agree to be part of Grow Your Own, that you agree to work for 28 weeks at whichever school district that we decide that you need to be placed at, um, that you will be paid a stipend of $15,000. We pay it August before you start, sort of like a starting bonus. And we pay December when you finish your first semester and then May when you finish your last semester. The stipends go through TEA gives us the money and the stipends go through the school districts. So it will not mess up your, any sort of financial aid that you get. The $5,000 goes directly to you. Now you have to, to save some money for taxes because they're not taking any taxes out, but we have to have the process done by, the selection process done by uh, May the 29th. So by the end of May, you would know if you have, you know, been chosen and that you have agreed to work there, to work at the school. Uh, Dr. Ramos, you want to, uh, they may not be as familiar with Taft. Can you tell us a little bit about your school district? And I think you're, oh yeah, good, you're not muted. No, we're good. Um, so our school district, we're a fairly small school district. We have three schools, a pre-K through uh, fifth grade school, a junior high, sixth through eighth grade, and a high school. Um, and just Taft itself, one of the things that the uh, students that were in the program talked real big on community and the cooperation. And I think for Taft, that's one of the things that I know that they will find there as well. It's that sense of community that we have with one another and the cooperation that you get from other teachers uh, that are that are in that are part of the group. Uh, for myself, I'm finishing out my 20th year at Taft ISD, and I've been there in a range of capacities from teacher through to administrators. And whether it's teacher to teacher or teacher to administrator, you have that cooperation in that group to to where you don't feel like you're ever on an island. You're always working with somebody, and they're always there. Somebody's there to help you along the way. So it's a real community, it's, it's a group effort. And um, we've got a lot of exciting things and initiatives that are going on in our schools. Um, so we're, we're real excited. And uh, I know Mr. Trevino, our superintendent, uh, is very excited as well. Unfortunately, he couldn't be here today, but um, we're, we're excited about this program. Okay, good, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Ms. Moore, you wanna tell us a, a little bit about West Essos or, and your experience with us for the first year. Um, so uh, for those of you, I'm not sure how many of you even know where it is. I honestly didn't know for a long time, um, mo moving to Corpus, but West Essos ISD is sort of the couple of exits before the airport. And it, so it's like the West Essos ISD is actually a little, little hole in the donut and uh, we're surrounded by CCISD. And this district was a um, historically African-American district um, when there was segregation. And then when there was integration, our district now is about roughly 86% Hispanic, um, about 10% African-American, anyway, roughly that, and just a couple of percent Caucasian. Um, but it's an, we're all, the whole district, all the different um, campuses are within like a mile of each other. And there's definitely a huge sense of community. The district is 91% economically disadvantaged. So, um, but what's interesting is that we even have um, on our campuses, uh, staff members, teachers that grew up in West Oso and stayed, even though maybe economically they actually could probably live in a larger house or whatever, but they've stayed there because of that sense of community. Um, and one other thing is that um, even, even our superintendent is extremely accessible 
He's extremely supportive of this program and very much values his relationship and our relationship with the university. And so I think that's another piece that's different is that because those, um, the, the whole district all from you know, superintendent on down, you've made this commitment, they're gonna make a commitment to you as well. They're, they wanna be invested in you. Whereas you know, in a field-basing situation, not so much because you're gonna be there two days a week and then you won't be there again in most situations. So I think you'll quickly feel like you're a part of the community. Good, thank you. Um, I'm gonna, before I open it up for questions, can I, can I call off who I have down as being here? I think I've, I've, I think I've got everybody. Uh, Kylie Bertram, can you say, well, I don't know, I'll just say your name. Kylie, and so in other words, listen for your name if I've missed you. Kylie is here. Amber, I think, is listening on the phone <laughs> with uh, someone. Uh, let's see. I have Lyndon Mack, Caitlin Pace, Bailey Waitrick, 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 Alexandra Kelly, Isabella Zamora, Zoromano, so anyway, Z, uh, Erica Huerta, Sarah Sales, Sydney Weiser, Chelsea Williams, uh, Initial K Hamling, uh, for, uh, Mary Fernandez Gutierrez, and then, okay, I have, uh, is someone named Bianca, 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 uh, tell me how I would have, what would, what would, uh, can you turn your mute off <laughs> for a minute? And Bianca, what is your, uh, what's your I, Islander email? Um, it is B, and then my last name, which is R-O-D-R-I-G-U-E-Z. Rodriguez, okay. 54. 54, okay, great. Bianca, okay, great. And then Alyssa, oh, oh that's the same one. Okay, Aly Alyssa's your name too. <laughs> okay, somebody on here, it just reads notebook. Excuse me, MacBook. It's Myra Nahira. Oh, okay, Myra, okay. I've got your name down. Uh, may I have your Islander email? Yes, it's M N A J. E R A R A and then uh -huh. at Islander. Okay, so there's and no number, no number after you. Yes, there's no number. Okay, okay. So I think I've got. Is there anybody on that I didn't get your name? I didn't say your name. The K stands for Kim. Kim oh, Hamlin. Kim. Okay, thank you, Kim. You're welcome. Okay, so I think we're ready to open it up for questions. And we did add Erica Velasquez is on here now. She's another one of our GYO students or from this year, our candidates. So um, she can answer questions too, if you have them for GYO. Good, thank, thank you for coming, Erica. <laughs> so why don't you say your name before your question? <laughs> I have a question. It's Isabella Zamorano. Okay, Isabella. Um, during field basing, we're supposed to take, um, at least for EC generalists for reading, we're supposed to take our field based reading class um, Monday or Wednesday in the mornings for yes. like two hours. How does that work during Grow Your Own? Perfect. That, that's definite. That happened this year. So what will happen is if you have, let's say you have the class on Monday, y'all will all be in the same reading field based course. Um, the okay. ones of you who have that, and so you will just be in that class for those two hours off of your campus, and then you will come back to campus. Y'all will also be okay. all part of the same classroom management, so you'll be a cohort with pretty much everything you do, but yes, there are, okay. there is, there are classes that are required during the field-based experience that you will have to attend but we will, because we know that, then that will be the time definitely that you are away from your, you know, home campus. So that's a good question. 
And I okay. also mentioned, I thought this is where you were going to go with this, but it wasn't, but content exam, which hopefully, since all of you are planning on completing field-based in the fall, hopefully you have already contacted Ms. Carol Pike or uh, Ms. Rose Zaniga, and you have already told them that you are ready to field-based and that you have maybe done the application, you've gotten your, hopefully, your study exam um, materials. If you have not, I would suggest emailing Ms. Carol Pike as soon as possible or email one of us and we'll get you in touch with that because part of the grant also pays for your content exam and your exam during clinical teaching. So um, that's another benefit is you do get your certification exams paid for and um, we do help you, of course, with, you know, um, study materials and, and figuring all of that out and everything. And so, of course, the sooner you can start on that in studying and completing the prep work with Ms. Pike with the certification office, the better. So just another plug there for a benefit as far as testing, but also just to make sure whether you end up choosing GYO, you know, to apply or not, that if you're planning on um, completing field base in the fall, make sure you're already on the grid and the certification office realizes that. <laughs> okay. Thank you. I have a question. My name is Kimberly Hamling. I um, will be taking two courses this summer. But I will also be taking my last two hashtag courses in the fall. Is that too much to apply for the program? What is your certification, Kim? EC through six core subjects. Okay. Um, do you what courses are you taking in the fall? If you don't mind me asking, if you want to chat with me later, <laughs> you can. I believe it's grammar and a science are my last two. I couldn't take them during the summer courses. Okay. Part so, of the application, well, and Dr. TD will answer, but part of that you do list on the application and it may, it's not, you know, it's not a guarantee cut from it, but um, yeah, TD. Yes, I think that's exactly correct. Just list that on your application and um, we will take everything um, into consideration, but don't let it be the reason that you don't apply for sure. But go ahead and list it and be transparent. And, and just and this is a message to everyone. We need you to be very open and honest and transparent on that application when it comes to your loads, because otherwise um, it could potentially compromise um, not only what you're going to do, but also the, the reason that you were um, uh, chosen to begin with. So we really need you to be very honest and open on your application in terms of what courses you have remaining and whatnot. And we may, and, and it'll help you because we may very well be able to work with you as we did with other students on their scheduling and course loads as well. Because the, the, we really want you to be a part of this. So we're trying, we're gonna work hard to, if, if, if the districts want you and we want you, we're gonna work really hard to, to make it happen. Thank you. And uh, Kim, someone said that there is a grammar course in the evening in the fall. Does yes, because I have to take grammar. My name's Caitlin. I have to take grammar in the fall as well. And I believe on Monday and Wednesday, there's one like at five that starts like at 530 in the evening um, time. So that way it would be completely after uh, school hours. All right. We're just trying to protect your time. And, and as Dr. Tejeda Delgado said, just uh, be honest on your application uh, to the best of your knowledge. These are, these are the courses that if, I, if, if my summer goes as planned, this is what I need in the fall and this is what I need. Hopefully by, uh, by the time you student teach, you're not gonna need anything at all. Will we, sorry, will we only be putting our fall courses on the application or like since I guess student teaching will only be student teaching I'm assuming <laughs> well like Dr. Brune said to the best of your knowledge what you anticipate for both semesters because this is a year-long commitment so what okay. you anticipate for both semesters and while she's correct in that the uh, assumption is that you only have that one course in conjunction with your clinical teaching but if you end up in a position where you're going to have more and you think you're going to have more looking into those the, your, your those two semesters that's what we want you to let us know about okay so, so, so the short answer is 
let us know about both semesters. Right. Okay. Thank you. Isabella, one of the things on the application we've listed, like, so we know during field experience, everyone will also have to take classroom management. Um, and then like we know the reading field experience, we know some of you have to take the technology. So there are courses that are built into the field based semester. So we know those, okay. those are listed there. Clinical teaching, you, there's also a special populations class that I believe all, if not the majority of you will have to take, but that is part of the clinical teaching semester already built in. So yes, I mean, those are listed there on the application for you. So we want everything um, definitely okay. in addition to that. Okay, thank you. And I mean, and, oh, sorry. And I, I, did, I did get uh, Kelly Martinez. I did. She, I, I, if I didn't say your name, I have you. In fact, surprisingly enough, we did not lose anybody when we <laughs> we didn't lose it. Oh, yeah. No, Alyssa Mejia and Dr. Lynch Davis both had to go, but they were, you know, they were just yeah. on observing. So this is perfect. <laughs> yeah. Good. Yes. Good. Thank you all. You all knew. Y'all all handled that very well. <laughs> So may I um, have a, I just am curious if you want to. So how many of you are EC6, either reading or, or early childhood? You just want to raise your hand. Okay. Do, uh, how many of you are, oh, yeah. oh, okay. And how many of you are math certification, either 4-8 or 712? Anybody on here? Okay. We got to <laughs> see if we can recruit some of those. Um, how many of you are science? Any science? Uh, do we have a special education? Certification okay. on here, Bailey. Okay. Um, did I miss any other certifications? E ELAR. Oh, oh, okay. Are you 4 8 or 7 12 ELAR? Who was that? Who was that? Oh, no, I was just asking them. But oh, oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so the majority is EC6, but that's good to know. Thank you. I wasn't, can I say one little thing about the whole schedule? Yeah. Um, and I'm sure any of the ladies that are uh, current Grow Your Owns will tell you this. What we'll look at is, you know, if let's say you have a, just saying, you have a 3.9 average and you've been able to hold a 20 hour a week job and done this, you know, and, and um, attend school, well then we could say, okay, that person probably could handle an extra course, right? Um, however, if your average is sort of right there on the, you know, sort of you're barely squeaking your way in, then we would probably recommend not to take extra courses. Does that make sense for me? Yes, very good point, Kimberly. Can I ask another question, please? It's Kimberly again. Um, I was wondering if any of the people who are currently in the program, do you have children? Hmm. I don't think there's any of us that have. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, well, no one has kids. Audrey had adult grown kids, like in their 30s already, I think had their own kids so yes, she had so we, we did have one who had children and grandchildren was planning a wedding during this time <laughs> so you know um but no we did not have any others but we do have some that are married like jasmine's married and and you know so in different um partners so yes good question but kim don't let that stop you girl no <laughs> i'm a mother of five children so. I five <laughs> Yeah, and I've got three at home. They're 15, wow. 12, and 9. So I'm just trying to gauge. I do have good grades. I'm not worried about that. I'm just worried about, I was thinking about the balance. How did you balance both school and uh, doing the Grow Your Own and family time? I can help you with that, Kim. Yes, I was going to say, we all can help you. And even some of the girls can, from this year can address, ladies from this year can address that. But yes, we definitely will help you. And you do have, um, you know, choice in things. And as far as, you know, you, it's not every night you're going to be involved in things. We give you a schedule way in advance. Um, and sometimes it's just, you know, the things you're involved in are just after school Yay. for a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> Jasmine's a problem solver. <laughs> but yes, Kim, do not, don't let that stop mm -hmm. you, you know, because we can definitely work with that too. Um, Oh, there, there yeah. is a, a, Sarah has written, is one of my students this semester, okay. and she, her mic is not working, so she put this on chat. My mic isn't working, but I have a question. I'm EC6 STEM, yeah. <laughs> so generalist with a STEM focus. I don't know if that was considered or included in the list mentioned. Mm -hmm. 
is on the application, Sarah. Make sure that uh, when you fill out the application that that's one of the uh, certifications. And we'd be excited to have you apply for sure. I have a question. <laughs> My name's Lyndon. So what happens if you get accepted into the program and like something happens and you can't do it anymore? If it's, if it's, uh, uh, if you start in August, if, if everything goes as planned in August, uh, you still get the $5,000 in August. Uh, that, that's sort of your signing bonus. That means you're planning on staying with us for that semester. If something happened during that semester and you weren't able to complete it, then of course you would not get another 5,000 in December. And uh, we do not make you pay back. The, we we pres presume goodwill that you, your intent is to stay the entire year. But we realize, and you know what? We are so happy to say that did not happen this year with all 10. All 10 started, all 10 are graduating. Uh, and so thank goodness everything has worked out great. But we realize that, you know, things happen. But this is not, uh, this is not a situation where you will be asked to be, to pay back. Okay, thank you. Isabella, you, do you have your hand up? No. I was clapping for the ones graduating. Oh, yay! <laughs> yes, that's cute. I have a question. My name is Mara. Uh, yes. Um, I, I was wondering the start date. Um, you said August, and I was wondering just if you do get accepted, what is that date? Uh, whatever the first day of class. I don't know. Was it, did, did they start the first day of classes, or like first day of we went to the convocation i know that uh, yeah we i know there was some for, some stuff before school started right Myra. convocation is usually at the big i think it was at the beginning of august um you know last year it was a little different because summer we had uh, the grow your own attend some of the professional development in the summer and the me by the sea conference of course we know things are a little bit different this summer but there may be opportunities in July where you can meet with your cooperating teachers or we might have a get together, but, um, and that'll be an opportunity that we would just love for you to, to do, but you know, none of that is planned right now just because things are still, of course, up in the air with everything. But um, what they did last year is they did go to convocation, which I think was the beginning of August, second week of August, and then you, um, for field based experience, we have a fall experience, so you're there a couple of days before the first day of the semester. So that's around what, like August 17th, 18th. But it's still, I mean, it's it's a maybe a week before the start of class, but it's it's yeah. right there in August as far as that's required of all field based experience students. So. And, and yes. of course, so I would aim. I would give a, a tentative date of August 10th, yeah. and and um, as being a tentative date for a good start and for, in part for some of the reasons that Dr. Johnson mentioned, but also in clinical teaching, we are starting sooner. We are starting clinical teaching earlier than we normally have in the previous semesters. And that's just something that we're changing in clinical teaching. So, um, so August 10th would probably be a good tentative date for you guys to sort of pencil in and calendar in somewhere as a date that this potentially can be, can, um, will be required for you all to, to begin. Right, and, and uh, it will be, Mr. Ramos will, uh, Taft will let us know too when they, when they start and what any of their uh, teacher professional development is before they start. Uh, yeah, and we'll um, for sure uh, let you, you'll be invited to, to those uh, uh, front end PDs. And I just have to say this, that we really don't know what even like summer school is going to look like. And so we've talked about some things and everything's not kind of up in the air. But for example, we traditionally have summer school in June. If it's the case that we're not able to do that because of the virus, we might even be looking at doing some things in August. Just It really just kind of depends. But we'll be communicating with you and anything in August, would at least most of it would be sort of voluntary. 
I know that schools normally take all of their things out of the classrooms and they do a really nice deep cleaning during the summer, but what typically is a teacher looking at for a date if they're going to start setting up their classroom? Um, that really, really varies. So I, there's teachers that are there most of the time. The, dist the districts close completely for the first two weeks in July. I would say there's those, you know, eager beaver teachers that are there constantly. And then there might be teachers that are only going to be there when they're required. So that really, really varies. And I mean, the girl, the our current girl young can tell you, I think, hopefully, if the teachers are kind of expecting you to do things that are that you can't do, then of course, you try to communicate with them with Dr. Johnson and myself, and we'll work it out. These are all really great questions. And if you all have, think of something or of a question and you don't want to ask it now for whatever reason, or you weren't able to, or you just didn't think about it at this time, um, not that we're closing the question session right now, but I just want to say that you can always email any of us with your question and we will um, respond to you as soon as possible. We're pretty good at responding right away. All of us are probably more than we should be. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the things I'll mention that Sam um, was a part of, but didn't, didn't really talk about too much. She did on her video that, you know, and I, I'm sure Taft will work with us too with this. You know, they, there are a lot of times the schools offer maybe after school tutoring or camps, impact camps, you know, summer camps, a reading um, experience that they actually, I know with Sam, she was actually paid, I think, to do some tutoring in the summer and do some things. So there's, this also opens up opportunities in the school districts beyond just the um, part of the field-based and, and clinical and, and volunteer things. You know, there, there are opportunities to do some um, camps, we even have done some professional development that we did just for the GYO so that they could then take it back into the classroom and try and work with their cooperating teacher. So once again, you know, there's a lot of positives of that where you are able to just do a lot more hands-on and interactive learning and immersion into the school district than maybe you would have in other opportunities. So, yeah. Um, if I could add, thank you, Dr. Johnson. I, I meant to bring that up and kind of forgot to. Um, thank you, Miss Moore, too, because I got to do the summer. It was like a STEM. It was like half STEM and then half kids who were retaking their STAR. And so you got to work with both. So half the day was kids that were basically doing the next year school work, getting a head start. And then the other half of the day was working the kids who were a little bit lower in their grades and just kind of get them ready to retake that test. Um, that was fun. Uh, it was, it was a month long and, you know, we got lunch every day and I got to know, um, Kimberly's teacher that, uh, her CT. So I got to know her. So I actually helped her set up for her classroom this year. Um, I got to do that. We got to go to the aquarium. Don't know what's going on right now with more cause with everything, but thank you. Cause she invited me back to do it again for this summer. Um, so hopefully that works out. And then in addition to that, I also, Miss Moore brought up to me, working on math counts. So I know most of y'all are generalists, but I saw the couple with the STEM focus. Uh, math counts is like, it's like district, regional, state, national. If you ever can look it up online, it's crazy fun to watch these kids do these math problems like in seconds. Uh, we got to host it this year. And so that was really fun. And then we went to one um, at A&M. We held it there. But uh, I got a little stipend for that. And that was working with the kids. Um, in the morning having practice and then there was two meets and there was some other stuff we get on to but yeah it's not just the classroom time like because of this like i wouldn't have known about either of those opportunities without this program and miss moore so thank you um one one note before we sign off the the application is very self-explanatory we do ask for a, a reference just one reference and you, we don't, uh, you give us their email and we send a reference form to them. So I would be sure, I would make sure that whoever you're asking to be a reference that you clear it with them first. And we're asking for like a professor or uh, an employer, 
someone, we don't want a family member. So we, so we want a professional reference. So um, I guess let me, oops, okay. Um, you're gonna get um, information. I wanted to say I wanted to say something real quick about getting yes. the references. Um, I'll, it doesn't take much to ask one of your other professors you've been in with. It was very easy um, just to ask, "Hey, I'm gonna apply for this," and I got an, a really quick response for mine. Right, and all all your professors know about Grow Your Own. They're all very supportive of it. Thank you, Eric. And that's also because you were so you're so amazing, Erica. Yeah. <laughs> I just put in the chat the, the link to the application. Um, it's just tinyurl.com, G Y O, grow your own 2020. Thank you. I was trying to look through my email, Kim, to get that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's a tiny URL, G Y O 2020. And it's it's on the grow your own uh, uh, the website. Did you say you put it on the chat? I'm not seeing it, Kim. So it's tiny. I'm not seeing it on the chat. Um, tiny URL. There we go. Sorry. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> um, thank you. And then Dr. Brun, if you would, when, even when you send them an email, just give all of our contact information. In other words, if they have a question for any of us, uh, oh. like yours, Dr. Who? Johnson's. Yeah. Who, who am I sending an email to? Um, the, the, if you can, the people that are here today. Oh, okay. You want me to send an email to the people who are here? I was going to send an email to the people who were not here today. <laughs> well, because Dr. Johnson said if they had a question, they didn't feel that comfortable saying it out loud. Oh, oh okay. I'll okay. I'll that. send. So it's www.tinyurl. And she sent that new flyer to us too, that I think, um, Dr. Mahale will put up on the website or send out on social media so we can also, that has the tiny URL on it also. Right. Okay. So, um, and, and although I know this is competitive, so you might not want to invite your friends, <laughs> but especially if you know anyone who is um, secondary, because there are some secondary spots. Um, so they won't necessarily be competing with you if you're EC6, <laughs> but we do need math certification, science certification. Um, we have one special Bilingual. ed, so, you know, um, but just if you, if you do have other certifications, uh, thanks, Erica, I see you have to go, but um, just invite people <laughs> if you're willing to do that. One of the things that Dr. Brune always likes to say, one of her words of wisdom is there's enough for everyone. There's enough for all of us to excel and all of us to share and all of us to <laughs> succeed. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hedda Delgado. Mm -hmm. On that positive note, mm -hmm. I think we'll dismiss the meeting. Uh, we'll dismiss all of you students. We might, professors might yes. stay on for a minute. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you all. We look forward to reading your applications. Mm -hmm. Bye, everyone. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah. Yes, hold on. Let me. Uh, it is tiny, T I N Y U R L dot com forward slash G-Y-O two zero two zero. Okay. So